absolutely need milk to get enough calcium. And the reality is that humans actually don't have any requirement for cow's milk. Humans have about the same requirement for cow's milk as they have for moose milk, deer milk, uh, dog milk, cat milk, or the milk of any other mammal, elephant milk. Um, you know, it's kind of ridiculous to think that any species would absolutely require the milk of another species for their survival. Before humans actually consumed or domesticated animals and consumed milk, the average calcium intake was in the range of 1,500 to 2,000 milligrams. It came almost exclusively from green, wild greens. Okay, so it is absolutely possible to get enough calcium without, without dairy. There are many advantages to getting your calcium from plants. And one of the advantages is just simply that plants provide a range of nutrients that, that really help with bone health. Things like vitamin C, vitamin K, folate. Uh, vitamin K is hugely important to bone health. And the primary source of vitamin K is leafy green vegetables. Uh, minerals like magnesium. Magnesium is at the center of the chlorophyll molecule. So you get a lot of magnesium. Potassium, boron. Does anybody know the richest source of boron? Flax seeds. So again, you know, another bonus for flax seeds. Um, you get antioxidants, you get phytochemicals, you get zero cholesterol, they're low in, in extremely low in fat, extremely low in saturated fat. Uh, dairy happens to be one of our richest sources of saturated fat, about two thirds of the fat is saturated in dairy products. So and I'm not saying that, that dairy products you know, are just never uh, should people consume them. But for a lot of people, 70% of the world's population are intolerant to lactose. Uh, so it makes sense for them to be seeking other sources. And, and plant foods are a very, very reasonable source. Now some people say, yeah, but we don't absorb calcium from plant foods. You only absorb calcium from milk. And that is actually not quite true. If you look at the available calcium, or the bioavailability of calcium from plants and from other foods, this is what we see. Dairy products, you get about 32% of the calcium from dairy. You get about 31% from tofu that's made with calcium sulfate. Uh, you get about 20 to 30% from things like legumes and soy milk, about 25% of the calcium is available. You get over 40% of calcium from no, low oxalate greens. From broccoli, you get about 61%. Okay, so these things, you're getting, in some cases, double the absorption rate uh, than you would get in cow's milk. Chinese greens, turnip, mustard greens, kale, all very highly available calcium. Now, this is very important. There are some greens from which you absorb very little calcium. They're loaded with calcium. Spinach, beet greens, Swiss chard, lots of calcium. However, they're also very high in oxalic acid. And oxalic acid forms a rock with calcium. Okay, and you cannot get, you can get calcium off of phytates when it's bound to phytates. It, 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 it's something that our bodies can do to some extent, but with oxalate, forget it. It is very difficult to release calcium from oxalic acid. And so what happens is you absorb about 5% of the calcium from spinach. And, and the rest just goes right through you. Okay, so, so know that spinach isn't a good food. Spinach has wonderful levels of folic acid and vitamin A and all kinds of things. But it's not your source of calcium. You want to be aware of the calcium thieves. There are a lot of factors that reduce calcium absorption, like insufficient vitamin D. Above anything above the 40th, you produce no vitamin D between about October and March. And so you need a source. And in Canada, we recommend 400 international <laughs> units of vitamin D a day. Most experts are now saying that should be at least 1,000. We don't have official recommendations from Health Canada yet, but you can rest assured that it will be increasing because we used to think vitamin D was just about bone health. Remember, if you if you were a child, you'd get osteo or you'd get rickets. If you if you were lacking in vitamin D, if you were an adult, you'd get osteomalacia. So just bone diseases. Now we know it's like everything under the sun you can get when you don't different types of cancers, uh, autoimmune diseases like MS and all kinds. The list is growing by the day. It seems. 
we need some sunshine and we need some vitamin D. So it seems in Canada we need, we need to supplement. Of course, oxalates, as I mentioned, phytates and unsprouted cereal grains, especially bread. This is one of the reasons that it's great to sprout is because you get quite a reduction in phytates when you sprout. But bread is kind of like a phytate pill. The problem with phytates is not only do they decrease calcium absorption, they decrease mineral absorption, period. Uh, zinc absorption, iron absorption especially. And so as vegetarians, we already don't absorb those minerals as well as people who consume meat. Last thing you want to be doing is sprinkling bran over your food to further reduce your absorption of these very important minerals. There are other factors that, that increase how, our, how much calcium we get rid of through our urine. Uh, too much salt is probably the biggest factor. And most North Americans eat a ton of processed foods with a ton of salt. Uh, excessive protein. And diets producing a high acid ash. Now, sufficient protein is critical to bone health. It's very, very important to get enough protein. But when we consume a couple hundred milligrams or a couple hundred grams of protein a day, it, it can actually increase calcium excretion significantly. So how do acid-forming diets hurt bones? Well, when your diet is too acid, our pH is generally 7.35 to 7.45. Our body neutralizes the acid using this amazing store of alkali, calcium, from our bones. Okay, so what happens is, it, obviously, you're going to reduce the mineral content over time, and you could end up with osteoporosis. The excess calcium is just excreted in the urine. And in the process, there's a tendency for calcium salts to settle out in the form of kidney stones. Okay, so that's not a good thing. Now, this is something that I, I find very interesting. There's some research coming, a lot of coming out of Europe, looking at the potential renal acid load of foods, or something we call a prawl. And when you look at foods, these are acid-forming foods. And to start with, the thing that you need to know is, it, this does not mean you shouldn't eat acid-forming foods. Okay? What you need to do is you need to eat more alkaline-forming foods than acid-forming foods. So check out what is at the top of this list. Parmesan cheese, 34.2. Then processed cheese, 28.7. Then hard cheese, 19.2. Then we've got our canned corned beef or canned meats. 13, and then meat, poultry, 9.5, and then we've got some nuts, Brazil nuts and cashews, then eggs, then fish, and then grains, and then walnuts, lentils, <laughs> barley, buckwheat, and some more nuts. So now when we look at the pearl of the alkaline forming foods, white beans, minus 23.2, uh, large limas, minus 18.3, uh, dried fruits, minus 12 to 14, green leafies, and then avocados, uh, all sorts of other beans bananas, um, some more beans, more fruits, vegetables. Then look at hazelnuts, one of the nuts that isn't a more acid-forming nut, then macadamia nuts. And then we've got, well, it's a pseudo-grain called quinoa. It's not technically a grain, it's technically a seed, but it, it fits into the alkaline-forming foods as well. So what does that mean in terms of acid-based balance? What do you want to be doing? Eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, right? And some legumes. And so what do we need? Well, adults probably need about 1,000 milligrams a day, a little bit more for, for adults over 65. So calcium-rich foods, the leafy greens, things like figs, almonds, uh, all kinds of beans, tofu made with calcium, fortified products like fortified soy milk or almond milk, um, a molasses, or especially blackstrap molasses. You get about the same amount of calcium in two tablespoons of blackstrap molasses as a cup of milk. So bone health involves meeting recommended intake for, for, for calcium, other bone building nutrients, and I won't go through them. You need enough protein, you need enough essential fatty acids, and you need to exercise, and how much? I would say 60 minutes for at least five times, five to six times a week. 